that's a massive misconception with the energy pricing you know increasing and increasing as it is and lots of people are especially when you talk about ev charges for example you know i've got an ev vehicle and i have my ev tariff so like you oh, say 40 yep. p during normal peak times but uh, seven and a half p and off peak yeah. well why can't you use that period when you're off peak to charge batteries up Hello and welcome to another CEF Tech Talking podcast. We've got a bit of a road show going on, Dave, haven't we? We're in Blackpool now. Yeah, we've been saw, seeing the lights. I saw the tower. We drove down the Golden Mile. Got to get some rock. Got to get some rock. <laughs> Let's get some rock. But yeah, can't go, don't go home without the rock. Don't do it. Just some funny shaped rocky <laughs> <laughs> You got the ICS rock at all? Yeah. Uh, you know, oh, yeah, we should be getting some. Yeah. Development. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you uh, join us here today to talk about battery storage lots of people are talking about this dave lots of people want to know about it so we thought we'd come to the place that knows everything about this blackpool and we've got here with us we've got stuart stuart welcome thank you very much for joining us um, what is it you do and who do you do it for hello well, i'm stuart stuart burton i'm the divisional manager for ics and you're in blackpool so ics stands for what intelligent charging systems so you've probably seen ics if you come to a tech talk you would have definitely seen these because we've been talking lots about electric vehicle charging and that's really where it started but with renewables being the way that they are, you've sort of grown into other areas, and one of them is battery storage, isn't it? For sure, yeah. Now, this battery storage, we're all hearing the prices of energy going through the roof. Only the other day I saw someone suggesting that their standard rate was at 56 pence per kilowatt hour, and then their night rate was going to be somewhere around 5 or 6 pence per kilowatt hour. This automatically thinks, why am I dragging the energy off the grid during the day? Why don't I put it in batteries, or even better still? create your own energy off panels and then store it into batteries and you guys have been looking at this here because you guys are just about to launch batteries aren't you we certainly are yeah so a range of batteries which are you know stackable scalable but also as well fully integrated with our ev chargers hence you know, yeah the- clever so 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 a battery then basically we we use batteries in most of our appliances don't we nowadays but batteries coming onto electrical installations this is going to be big isn't it absolutely huge you know that every, every trade show we go to every tech talk we go to you know we've got a queue of people and all they want to ask about is battery storage yeah now this this we've been talking about it for quite a while dave yeah you know, we, we, we we've, we've been giving it a push but I, what i hadn't realized until we had a chat coming here is just how much power you can store and retrieve relatively easily with the systems that you're offering so what would be a baseline system just so we get some level of what we can store well, obviously it depends on your, your, your consumption of your property, but we're seeing inquiries now where probably most people are having the one hybrid inverter and then maybe two battery modules, so around about 10 kilowatts for the storage. So the, the modules. There. Yeah, so yeah, we've got so the modules, so 10 kilowatts of storage, but this is going via the hybrid inverter. So tell us the advantages of that. For sure, yeah. So obviously you know, most people are looking at battery storage predominantly because they've already got uh, solar. Yeah, yeah, PV so on the roof, the, panels on the roof. Yeah, yeah so the, the big benefit of having what we call a hybrid inverter is that you're, you're using the DC uh, energy supplied by the solar panels yeah. going directly into the battery rather than needing to go through an AC kind of conversion uh, to DC, which is obviously giving you losses. So it avoids those losses. Correct. It's a much more efficient way to do it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, these, these, these batteries, you said they're stackable. So does that mean they come in certain sized modules? That's right, yeah. So we, we have uh, 5.12 kilowatt hour um, modules and they can be stacked um, up to three physically, but actually up to eight batteries in, uh, wired in parallel on the system so giving you the best part of 41 kilowatt worth of storage <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of battery isn't for it? sure yeah, yeah that'll, yeah. See, that'll see you out <laughs> if you think about it average consumption is between sort of 10 15 for your typical sized home there are those obviously that have got larger demands if you're working from home and you've got electric heating and stuff like that but typically when i've been measuring it it is it's around about that 10 15 kilowatt so three batteries would sort of do a house every day now that's a, a cycle is it you call it a cycle don't you a charge cycle correct yes yeah. so me charging the battery up and then depleting all the energy in that and then having to charge it all up again is one cycle how many can these do mate well ours are, are warranted for 10,000 cycles yeah so over 10,000 really, in reality yeah, here we go Look, 20, Dave's got his fingers and thumbs 20, 26 years oh, that's, yeah that's sort of figure isn't it yeah, yeah that's sure. a long time I mean, that's that's a good life to invest in isn't it 
Correct. I'm not going to yeah. wear out in five years and you think, well, I wasted my cash. Well, I won't be. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I didn't see the news out, were they? <laughs> but, you know, I wanted to ask you a question because we just recently had a 12-hour power cut. Mm -hmm. My wife said if we had batteries, uh, we wouldn't have lost power. Do you, does your system work like that? Because there's a problem. If, if you come off the grid... You, Correct. The, the yeah. the, can't you can have these systems set up in various various ways, and one of the way one of the modes that you can have it set up to it is to work kind of if that if you have had a power cut and you can work and you can actually run it off grid if you're like anti islanding mode they, they tend yeah. to call it. So this is islanding mode. So in order to go into islanding mode, um, it needs to make sure it's got its own reference to Earth. So we'd have to install an electrode. That electrode has to be at less, less than, than twenty, 20 ohms. ohms. Yeah. And then yes, Dave, you could have enjoyed the energy stored in the battery. So your twelve hours by candlelight. I well, know it's romantic. It was very it romantic. Been it was. We did have candlelight in the fire. Yeah, yeah. No, it, was, it was a good thing, but it would have been quite nice. It was quite nice when the power came back. I mean, I mean you, you you wouldn't want to be having a, your electric shower during that period or anything like that. But you know, you'd certainly want to protect your your circuits, like your fridge freezer, fridge freezer, and have some basic lighting. Correct. Source, yeah. 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 It's Wi-Fi nowadays. And the Wi-Fi Wi -Fi is kicking off. Big one was the Wi-Fi. Yeah. 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 So you can go into islanding in mode on these ones. And the other thing that I want to talk about here is. Batteries, right, so these batteries, a lot of people are thinking that they should really only ever go down batteries if they've got PV. That's a massive misconception, you know, like you mentioned in your intro there, with the energy pricing, you know, increasing and increasing as it is. And lots of people, are, especially when you talk about EV charges, for example, you know, I've got an EV vehicle and I have my EV tariff. So like you right. say, 40-odd yep. P during normal peak times, but... <laughs> Uh, seven and a half p and off peak yeah. well why can't you use that period when you're off peak to charge batteries up yeah you don't know if you're charging a car or charging the battery to use later on do or you? both C can you decide what goes where indeed so whether you put it into the house installation whether it goes back to the grid or into your battery, you can decide all that can you yeah certainly on I mean, again i can only talk about our product but certainly yeah. on our product yeah we've got that full integration you know we, we use our app where you can then select the operating mode so again choose whether or not it's coming directly from the grid and you can choose that on your on, on, in your car charger actually as well as well as your inverter so you got yeah you got full functionality using our and, and how do you do that? Is it an app? Presumably it's an app. It's just an app. It's an app. It's just an app nowadays, isn't it? You just got to get an app. I mean, you can stand in your attic and go on the programming uh, <laughs> module if you really want to, or you can just get your phone out on your sofa and, and, and change the mode. You know, it's oh, it's right, up to you. So really. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the bit about uh, it's been up in the attic. So right, these batteries, do they have to go in the attic? Or where else can we put them? Well, the, our units are IP65, so you can use them outdoors or indoors. 65. That's yeah, pretty good. So 65 is pretty good. good. Yeah, and that's. Temperature-wise, they're okay out there. In a yeah, cold for sure. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you've got a quite a big operating mode these days. You know, that minus ten to you know, forty odd degrees. Now, so. we, we we have heard, I mean, and talking to the guys here when we were spending a bit of time in the earlier, yes, we are seeing temperatures now in the winter in the UK that can drop <coughs> below that. Especially if there's wind chill, you never know in some areas. But that won't necessarily mean the inverter is going to switch off. Because, again, when it starts to uh, charge, uh, when it starts to deplete the energy, at that point, it's going to start to get a little bit warmer. It will drop above that, that, at, uh, that operating temperature. So it will work, just as not as quick or as efficiently as you want Take a while to warm up. It's just not that. as efficient. Yeah. It's not, if, yeah, for yeah, those people massive. driving electric cars, you know, your, your range is massively reduced in really cold weather. It's, only, yeah. it's a similar kind of thing, but you've got better technology in the, in the battery storage using LFP batteries, for example, rather so than... L LFP batteries? Yeah, what's, what's, the, what's the battery technology there, then? Yeah, yeah. So, so it's just briefly run us through the stages of battery evolve evolution then where are we well initially people were using you know, sealed lead acid batteries yeah, you know, big car batteries wet. stacked up and yeah. you know absolutely you would need a huge bank of batteries to you know, to power i remember going around topping them up mate yeah. 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 Go around, yeah. well there used to be emergency light systems that worked off those types of batteries and part of our maintenance job was to go around and top them up top, yeah. them, top the batteries probably, probably getting high or yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great job i love it <laughs> So, so then, of course, we moved to you know higher density you know batteries, so the lithium battery cells, yeah, yeah and, and all the rest of it. So, certainly in the, in, the, in terms of lithium, you've got your, your two different technologies. So you got lithium ion, which which is great again, very dense, but yeah. you you do have the issue with thermal runaway. Mm. So, right, so yeah, okay. th th we'll thermal runaway. Mm. So <laughs> thermal runaway. Where, where where are we with this one? So we're now the the next stent generation. Which the is the a LFP. Safer it's a safer, yeah. Sense. So even if you puncture an LFP battery, you're not likely to get the thermal runaway. Really? Oh, right. Okay. But just going back to the whole thermal thing, what sort of protective measures are available? 
Um, on any you know, decent battery storage system, you've got a, you know, a battery management system, so yeah. you've got safety features inherent with that. So a lot of them, or certainly our product in particular, will actually monitor individual battery cells. You know, right. so mani- monitor the voltage, man- yeah. monitor the temperature. If that temperature starts to get too high, what happens? Well, the, the battery itself will kind of degrade itself, and so it, it's not running at, at full pelt okay. in the first instance. But then, if it's because of an issue, and, and you're getting you know a hotter and hotter um, um, battery itself, we've also got additional safety features now. So we think we're one of you know, very few people in the marketplace to actually have a, a, an anti you know, fire suppression device. You see, if, the, if, this, mm. if I'm putting it up in the loft. And knowing full well that there's that peace of mind, if it was going wrong up there, that it is going to look after itself mm. rather than burn me house down. <laughs> that's, that's, that's quite... Because me and you have spoken about thermal yeah. I mean, the fact that you're now using this new battery technology means so you don't get that. It basically it's great. will not combust. It will always kill itself before it combusts, yeah. is what you're saying. Well, yeah, they, they, they set it for certain temperatures, 140, 160 degrees C, mm. whatever, whatever it is. But again, if, you, if you're having a battery at that temperature, you're in real trouble yeah, anyway. Got, yeah, so problems, you? so you, once you get over that kind of temperature, that's when it kicks in and it's in its you know, various chemical formulas and it's pulsing and, it's, and it stops it from actually combusting in so the first place. fire suppression within mm. it. That's, that's, that's quite... That's quite, quite now, nice. we've been talking for about 10 minutes so far, so anybody that's still listening is interested. <laughs> so if they were going to think about these installations, how complex is it for a, a, a Sparks? Well, it's fairly straightforward. It's, it's, I wouldn't say it's plug and play, but it's certainly from a from an installation point of view, you know, fairly straightforward these days. To be honest with you, a lot of people are replacing existing inverters, so you've already yeah. got the you've already got the infrastructure in there. So you replace your existing AC coupled inverter to a DC coupled hybrid inverter yep. uh, and then you connect it's in your battery modules which are stackable and if you're using our product you've got the quick connectors as well so you're connecting between the, the battery and the inverter and what sort of cable runs are, your, are ideal you want to keep the dc as short as possible yeah. very much so dc you know, without a doubt as short as possible you're just going to need huge cables if you're yeah. putting some so it's, it's charging at quite a large amount of amps then that's the dc side so you need to keep them as short as possible isolation is a big thing people think because they've got isolation on a normal PV system that that's okay and adequate for a battery system as well. It's not. You're going to have to add one or two more, at least one more isolator as you go through yeah. into that battery yeah, yeah. storage system. So and you specifically a DC isolator with the one. Yeah, you are. Yeah. If you're doing that DC coupled, uh, yes, without a doubt, you're going to need another one of those there. Now, there's a feature we haven't talked about here, which I understand is quite if not unique, is certainly very special on yours, and that's the C chart, the discharge rate. Yeah, this is their discharge is a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah because you that. can sustain a full full one C discharge yeah. for full in, one indefinitely. C. Yes, one C means what? Basically, the full capacity. So if we've got a five kilowatt inverter, for example, so yeah. that that's you know giving you that full best part of twenty two amps output right. continuously. That's amazing. Mm. So that so that's so that's that's what you could be consuming from the battery. Anything more than that? So if you want, if you got a, a load that was thirty, twenty one would come from the battery. The rest would come from the. Yeah, correct. Yeah, so you don't need to. Yeah, don't worry be about it. You can only use a little bit of it. <laughs> <laughs> Your house will still work, yeah. but some of it will come from the battery. Yeah, and that, that's that's important. You know, so if you're trying to save money by using one of these battery systems you want it to be used as much as possible yeah you, you want to rely on the grid as least as you put as least as possible now you've had these under under test here and we we know through doing the the pure maths if you're looking at what people's energy bills are likely to be uh, battery storage if it's installed correctly can reduce the bill to, by about 90 percent of what people are expecting to pay. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I'm seeing this, I can talk personally here. Uh, looking at my bill, my next 12 months have been projected. They suggest it's going to be somewhere around £1,800 oh, £1, for my electric. Mm-hmm. And looking at this technology, it would dramatically reduce it to about 200 quid. The payback is starting to become quite significant now, isn't it? Quite quickly. Mm. Uh, have you any sense of how quickly you would recoup the installation costs at, at these current rates and maybe inflated rates? It's, it's difficult to say, if I'm being honest. You know, every every installation is different, and we do we do generalise from time to time. But it really does need you to to have a look at what what your consumption is, and probably just as importantly, when your consumption is as well. Yeah, know. and and the style of the lifestyle, Correct, and when you've got yeah. electric vehicle and all that. Model, all I mean, like, the, the electric vehicle bit. I mean, effectively, it's another big battery, isn't it? So you'd be charging the battery in the home, and then the battery mm. on the on the drive. Yeah, it gives so, you huge capacity. So you've got it, to store quite a lot there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that the, the, the app works with that, does it not? So the app would allow you to determine whether it's the car that gets charged or whether you're using it for your shower. Yeah, that's quite an important USP from our point of view, from ICS. So we've got the capability of being able to choose 
uh, if you're using that battery for your car, because obviously you know, my car is a 90 kilowatt battery, you know, so yeah. you're talking 5, 10 kilowatt battery modules, for example. Yeah. That's a drop in the ocean of your full <laughs> battery charge. But So you might not necessarily want all of that battery being used to charge your vehicle. So, so some of the other product out in the marketplace isn't smart enough to understand what load is being asked for. Yeah, Whereas yeah. On, the, on our app, we've got that capability of being able to choose where, where it comes from and where it goes to. Yeah. Yeah, and as we reach the end of this, let's just go through a quick checklist. If somebody is now listening, thinking, I want to get into this thing, I want to understand it. What are the, what are the key features that you need to look for in a good, efficient battery story system? Okay, well, you, you need to make sure you, you, you provide enough enough capability for your needs so you know the, the bigger the size inverter for instance is probably a, a decent thing to look at first yep. the battery technology make sure you're looking at lfp4 you know life i4 uh, battery technology mm -hmm. obviously for the safety because obviously that's something that's yeah, paramount that's, yeah, for everybody yeah, I mean, yeah. you, you, and this discharge rate. and the discharge rate and the charge rate as well you know the, the, charge the, the charge rate is probably less important but certainly the discharge rate making sure you, you can get all of that power all of the time because there's no point having a, a really big battery with loads of energy sat there we can only take an amp off at a time <laughs> yes <laughs> is there imagine that you never actually fully discharge it exactly that yeah. to charge up again you know, the whole point of it is that you want to reduce your reliance on the grid so you want yeah. you want a piece of equipment that you can maximize that i think the fact that these guys have cracked the technology now and you can get a 10,000 life cycles or charge cycles of this one just goes to prove that technology works really. oh I'm impressed by that I mean that's that'll see me out and we, oh yeah, yeah well that's you done isn't it right okay so if anyone wants a, a, a reasonably used battery <laughs> Dave's gonna take, oh, Dave will take about five years of it <laughs> you're not reading any long books are you mate <laughs> right thank you very much for listening to it if you're liking this you should share tell everyone about it go and scream it from the rooftops and uh, thank you very much Stuart, for joining us you're welcome my uh, pleasure thank you for listening to this one and if you're watching on youtube thank you very much again thank you for joining us on another cf tech talking podcast Thank you.